Okay, we'll um, we'll mute you all. Obviously, there's going to be opportunity later um, for you to share um, something about what you might have learnt in lockdown. Um, so, sorry about that. Uh, I can't remember what I said either now. Oh, except that we can start now. Arlene's here. Good evening, Arlene. <laughs> Um, so um, there will be opportunity, that's what I was saying, um, just to share um, anything about what you've learnt in lockdown, okay, and uh, we're still practising with it, we kind of got used to it a little bit more, um, still frustrated, but um, we kind of, we, we, know, we know how to manage life. Um, with lockdown. And um, some of you um, might have been able to pick up my message from last Saturday, uh, which I set you a challenge for lockdown of either to read um, a book in the Bible that you haven't read before, or um, a challenge to, to start a new project. Now, um, we're a week in, so um, you don't need to feel, um, feel bad about it if you haven't done anything. Uh, you still got another week to go. Um, but I, I wonder if you've managed um, to read a book in the Bible you've not read before um, or um, started a new project. Now, um, and you can unmute yourself to share if you want to, or um, uh, you can just raise a hand if you have started something new or read a book in the Bible um, that you haven't read before. Anybody done it yet? Don't feel bad if you haven't. Great, that's Christine Morgan, Paula, um, Christine Hurd, uh, Pat. Um, I don't know if any of you want to unmute and just share what you might have done. It might encourage others. You don't have to. Um, you could just put your head down and pretend I didn't mention your name. Um, uh, just turn your video off or something. <laughs> you can always hide when you're on Zoom. Um, but um, um, anyone willing to share to inspire someone else? I will, if you like. Okay, Paula, thanks. Oh, thanks, Denise. Um, I started to try to learn to play the piano. Um, I can't read music, so I got to learn that as well. And I didn't realise I'd set myself such a hard task. Um, I'm, I can't play chopsticks yet. I can play London's Burning, but that's about my lot. Um, and uh, I haven't read a part in the Bible yet, but I will do that this week coming now. So it's a, an ongoing uh, process because it's going to take me for the rest of my life, I think, to learn to play the piano. I had no idea it would be this hard. Mm -hmm. But there we are. Keep going. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. Thanks, Paula. Anyone else? With my warped sense of humour, I thought I would look at the book of Job to see <laughs> how he coped with all his problems. You know the saying that says patience of Job? So I thought I'd try and see how much patience he has and how he coped with it. So I know I've read it before, but I thought I'd have another go and see what I'm learning a lot more than I've picked up more this time than I have before because I've had given myself more time. So it's very interesting. I'm on chapter four. So here goes chapter five tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Christine. Anyone else? Well, you, oh, Christine Morgan's, I can see her mouth moving. You need to just unmute yourself. Is that right? Yeah, great. I started reading Ezra and uh, it's quite difficult. I'm plodding through it. Excellent, excellent. Well done, don't, don't give up, keep going with it. Good. Well, there's one or two who have started, so it might inspire the rest of us. And the projects, two projects I had set out for the two weeks, still sitting in the place they were when I spoke about it last week. But I have another eight days, or is it seven days, um, to go um, while, we're, while we're in this, this set of lockdown. Um, we're going to, later on, um, listen to our international leader, General Brian Pedrell. And he's going to share with us. Um, and uh, obviously, he's not coming in person. I'd apologize for that. Um, but a video that he's done for the uh, International Salvation Army. 
Um, and, and I found it quite inspiring and challenging. So I wanted to share that with you. So we'll listen to that a little later on. But we're going to share a song together. Um, I don't know whether it's a song that you would know or know well, but uh, these are the days of Elijah. Um, and uh, it speaks of a number of the Old Testament um, characters, Elijah, uh, Moses, David, and uh, we know of their story that they went through challenging and difficult times. And in the chorus, it says this, Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Um, and interestingly, that um, I looked up that year of jubilee, because in conversations with various people, um, we're now what, eight months into um, uh, this, this crisis that we're in the middle of, and we'd never thought it would last this long and potentially for another few months yet. Um, and uh, there's been many conversations about um, the opportunity to rest and restore ourselves without the rushing around that we're so used to. And General Pedal will speak about that um, a little later. And uh, I just want to remind you, if you didn't, uh, or if you didn't know, just to let you know that that year of Jubilee is very significant. And if you look in Leviticus chapter 25, um, God commanded the house of Israel to observe a year of Jubilee every 50 years. And uh, that year of Jubilee was to be a year of rest, um, including the forgiveness of all debts, and the liberation of slave and servants to their native land. Uh, and I just was thinking about it as I was listening to this song earlier in the week, that the opportunity that we have in these days um, to have a time of jubilee, a time of rest, but then also to consider the opportunity as a time of forgiveness, of wiping slates clean and starting afresh. And that's not always easy. And, uh, and as we listen to or sing along with this song, um, maybe you can give consideration to what God might be saying to us uh, about this year of rest and this time of jubilee of rest and forgiveness. So let's just enjoy this song as we share together.
a year of jubilee, a year of rest, a year of forgiveness and uh, that challenge for us. Um, the reality of these days is that for so, so many people, and we see the numbers every day uh, being put on the telly, um, that this, this virus is changing their lives. And for so many people and too many people, it's taking their lives. And uh, it's almost hard for us to comprehend uh, when they put the number of figures um, that they do. And the reality is, um, all the time, uh, there are people and families around us being bereaved in normal lifetime. Um, but somehow this um, brings it more to light, the preciousness of life and time together. And um, we as Christians have um, the benefit, um, the wisdom maybe, that we can reach out to, um, to our Lord, um, to God, and knowing and trusting that in all circumstances, he journeys with us, however they hard, however hard they are for us. Um, such a time as this, um, we, as a core, have um, have cared for one another and kept safe. And yes, we have uh, we have lost a number of our, our friends um, who passed away in the last weeks. Um, but as far as the coronavirus is concerned, I, I feel we've been keeping safe but we want to take opportunity just now to spend some time praying um, and uh, some of you will have heard the update uh, on Jean Thomas having suffered a stroke earlier in the week now is back at um, the Haven care home and, and really not well at all um, so we pray for her in these days that she would just know God's comfort and God's strength as the people there care for her um, and uh, and, and other people within our fellowship who've been bereaved, um, who, um, whose lives have been changed in these months where we haven't been meeting together regularly. Um, so just an opportunity for us um, to pray. We're gonna use um, a song as we come to pray and then there is gonna be opportunity if anyone would like to pray when we, when we come back after the song, if you want to unmute yourself and, and share a prayer, please feel free to and then I, I will share a prayer too. Um, just even if it's just a name of somebody that you want us to be praying for just now. Um, but as we do, we're going to listen to um, a song, My Simple Prayer, um, played for, the words will come up, but it's a, a euphonium solo there to the tune of Donegal Bay. Um, and just words there that I think in times when we can't find our own words express our prayer just now. Um, so let's just come to a time of prayer. And when the song's finished, and we come back on the screen. If anyone would like to pray, just unmute yourself, please. Thank you.
Loving Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the gift of music and the realization how you use it for us to come closer to you. And we do thank you for the lovely words of that simple prayer. We do know you're there. And even though, Lord, we are not physically meeting today, we're already knowing and feeling your presence. Thank you, Lord, for that. We do ask that as you look upon us and you're with us and you're caring for us, that your arms of love will surround those who are feeling lost or feeling lonely or feeling frightened. We ask, O oh God, that your presence shall be felt to them. Bless our core in whatever way you choose to bless it. Bring us together, help us to unite and help us to be one in your name. We think now, Lord, of all those people across our country today who are facing another thing this week. We ask, O oh God, that you'll give us patience, give us understanding, give us kindness, and let us know that you are protecting us and you are looking after each one of us. We think of those who are bereaved this week and we ask a portion of your love to them. And we bring to you Jean and we ask that you will give her peace of mind and peace of body. Bless those who are looking after her. Help them to be patient and help them to be kind. Help us all, Lord, in what it is that we do for you and in your name. Lord, we just Amen. thank you for these moments of stillness, these moments to be together in your presence. And um, as we reflect on those words and a, a verse there that speaks about being afraid and not knowing what to do. Uh, but then another verse that says about feeling strong and faith is soaring high. And Lord, it seems like we're on a roller coaster with those emotions at times that one day um, we can feel on top of things and uh, in control uh, and able to face the day. And other days we're afraid. We don't know. And uh, there's the things that concern us. Uh, and we thank you because even in those days when we are afraid, we know the reality and the truth that you tell us constantly, that we do not need to fear, that you are our rock, you are our fortress, you are our ever-present need in times, ever-present help in times of need. Father, we just ask you to remind us of that. Father, we lift up to you um, the many, many lives that have been affected um, by um, the way that we are living just now, that people's lives that have been changed forever. Uh, and we ask um, that they would know something of your love and your care at this time through others around them. Father, we want to pray for our leaders, um, our leaders within the Salvation Army that have to make decisions, our leaders um, in our country um, that have to make decisions, trying to second guess what the future might hold. Father, never has there been a time when we really don't know what the future will hold. But we thank you because of that reassurance that you do. And Father, we pray that in these days of physical separation, um, that you will, from one another, that you will um, show us again the, the way that we can encourage one another and spur each other on. Thank you for the kindnesses, for the, the love that's been shown in these days. Help us to... To, to be prompted when we need to reach out to each other. Help us not forget to forget those that perhaps we don't see and, and that we can reach out to them. We thank you again for this medium that we can be together in this way. And just ask now that wherever we find ourselves, wherever we will be tomorrow, whatever we face this week, that we will know that you are already there waiting for us. So Father, thank you for this time. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, lockdown, what has it meant for you? And uh, what perhaps have you learned? We spoke earlier about taking on a challenge, something practical. Um, but I wonder in these last months, um, what you might have learned either about yourself, um, something about God, something about um, the world around us, the things that matter to you. And um, there's just a, a few minutes just now that if um, if you some of you would be willing to share what you've learned uh, and perhaps what God's been saying to you in these days. So just unmute yourself if you'd like to like to share um, and then uh, that'd be good to hear from each other a little bit.
I found out all the different wildlife that I have in the field behind me, from the bats that fly at night to the foxes and the rabbits and everything. So I've got an abundance of wildlife around me. So I might not be able to meet my friends, but I'm surrounded by creatures that God has put there. Thank you. Very glad to hear that outside your house and not inside, Carol. <laughs> I've been studying the Bible from the beginning during lockdown and I've got as far as Psalm 81. So I'm getting on quite well and I have learned such a lot. Um, some sort of kings and chronicles were quite hard going with all the different kings that came and the different nature, nations and, and the uh, constant wars and they had be between each other. I, I have learned a lot and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a blessing. Thanks, to, re to read God's word has been a real blessing. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? I think for me, I have had to learn the hard lesson of living one day at a time. I've never been one to look too much in the past, although I love my memories, but I don't dwell in the past. But I must admit that throughout the years, I've realized that I've always been in the future. I suppose it's because I'm a big organizer and I love to organize and plan. And so in my ministry throughout the years, I've been planning for next week, the week after, sometimes a year after. And I've always seemed to live in the future. But if lockdown has taught me anything, it is that I can't do that because we are so uncertain of what happens from day to day. So I suppose I've got to say that what I've had to learn is to live one day at a time. Thanks, Christine. I think there's many of us over this last month that had plans that we'd made many months ago, maybe a year ago, holidays different things that we've had to cancel one by one and hesitant to make any any plans just yet. Well, Anyone I, else? I learned patience because um, you before this lockdown started, um, you could plan whatever you're doing. You could do, you get up in the morning, you do whatever, but now it's like we cannot plan. So I rely more, not on my strength or, or my decision, I realize on God's strength and his decision. And I feel that I've, I'm more closer to him because I, when I'm feeling low, because I cannot see anyone, I read my Bible and there's always something in there that jumps up that make you feel, yes, you're not alone. You know, you could always call on him and he will give you the strength you need. So, you know, because at the moment it's that we just, the future is, it, it stands still. It's not, we do not know what the future holds. So we just have to just take, as, as Christians, I take one day at a time, but also know that you have friends around, you have people that you could call upon. And as he said, you know, love, joy, and have more faith, more joy, and just put everything at the foot of the cross and just let he control it all, you know? So that is my view. Thanks, Princess. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll mute myself. I'm sure um, when we all reflect, we've, uh, We've been taught something over this time um, and uh, we've learned lessons of life. I think the, certainly in those early days, that fear of the loss of life was huge, wasn't it? And uh, that, I think probably we've become a little bit more complacent about it, but that, that reality of life is here for this moment, as Major Christine said, to be, to be lived and uh, to do the best that we can. I want to share some scripture with you this afternoon from 2 Corinthians and chapter 4. 
if you have your Bible there with you. Um, 2 Corinthians and chapter 4. Um, treasures in jars of clay. Some think of the reality. Um, some of these words speak into our situation that we find ourselves in. And uh, more than once, um, Paul writes and he says, do not lose heart. Um, and that's what we want to encourage each other today, not to lose heart, despite the ever changing world that we're living in and not quite knowing which way it's going to turn next. 2 Corinthians and chapter 4. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in clay, jars of clay, to know that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We have, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day after day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The reassurance and the reality that um, our, our time on earth is but a moment in time of eternity and it's only a temporary thing. And um, someone once said to me, don't take life too seriously. It's only a temporary measure. And uh, unfortunately, life does get very serious at times and we are, cannot help but get caught up in it. Um, but those words from Paul to remind us, do not lose heart. Um, and to fix our, our, our eyes on the things that are unseen, the things of God, not the things of this world. Um, and although we are, have that challenge of living in this world, then we can also know what it is to know that we face everything in light of eternity. We um, are going to listen to our general just now. And um, it comes under the heading of what if. And uh, you might be someone who asks that question a lot, a lot and kind of has to think about every possible conclusion that might come. What if this happens or what if that happens? Or you might be a person that just kind of takes it as it comes and then deals with it then. Um, but he asks his questions and sets us a challenge around those words, what if? So sit back and relax as the general brings our message to us today. I have never been drawn to... <laughs> hypothetical questions. You know, the questions that start with, what if? 
I recall responding reluctantly when, as a Corps officer, questions about life and spirituality began with, what if? Then, as our daughters grew, there were many hypothetical questions that came. Dad, what if? I was glad quite often that their mother was close by. I've always wanted my journey to be marked by certainty, steadfastness, whose central focus was a God who was Alpha and Omega. And so for many years, I have steered away from what might happen. And I have fought against seeds of doubt. And I've embraced scripture like Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so in my view, I say, you can't mess with that. Well, COVID has presented its fair share of challenges. And the greater of these has been personal for many. Death, hardship, loss in various forms. These are real and they remain significant. Added to human toll is what comes for someone like me as a leader, focused on an international movement and a world that continues to face innumerable uncertainties. This period of pandemic, despite my preference, has generated a number of questions that are hypothetical. What if? So today, I'm going to break my own rules, but I want you to join with me and reflect. In doing so, I want you to exercise the kind of faith that we find in Hebrews 11. That kind of faith puts us in touch with what we do not know and brings us into a world of trust. In doing so, it links us securely to a God who is sovereign. You'll know verse 1 very well. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So here's the disclaimer. There is nothing good about COVID. But what if there are silver linings, positive outcomes that become available to us and they become available as we press hard into prayer to God, resulting in the discernment of his will for his church, for the Salvation Army. So what if God is in the midst of uncertainty and is doing a new thing and opening doors for a new era of the church, redefining mission in the world? What if, in our failure to care for his creation, this is a time of pause for the earth to breathe and for us to evaluate and perhaps begin again as those who have dominion over his creation? What if lockdown is not about Netflix and puzzles and walking and it's a way of saving us from a frenzied life that was unsustainable anyway. What if we have to consider that the central focus of his church was never meant to be a building, but a community that was connected with each other? What if his mission in the world was intended to be spirit-inspired and directed and institutional methods fell away? <laughs> What if online church wasn't the only option, but simply a reminder that he is doing a new thing as couch churches turn themselves into thousands of Messiah magnets attracting people to Jesus? 
What if we are finally catching a glimpse of what it means to stand on the edge of a next normal where God is truly answering our prayers? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And more than anything, what if God in this moment is truly near to each of us? Realities filled with uncertainty prevail, and for millions of people, health and daily provision and employment and future plans and dependence upon what we strive to create is shaken to the core. My heart breaks for the deep sense of tragedy that is creeping into the lives of people all around the world. My appeal to the army to officers and soldiers, is that while the world recoils and we distance and we're unable to gather, we will not miss the opportunity to draw close to the heart of God. I pray that we will examine our obedient faith. Is it fit for purpose? I ask that we scan the horizon and apply a holy and heavenly perspective with eyes that are fixed on the author and finisher of our faith. I'm happy to report that across the army world, the army is, is serving. There is sustained generosity. There are people ready, engaged, and taking responsibility for mission. I am amazed that with the creative measures the army has absorbed, it has adjusted itself, refocused and turned itself towards people in need. Let me note, it's not all level ground. We do not all have the same resources. It varies around the world. While some serve with adequate resources and out of generosity, others serve while they have very little, further marginalizing themselves, turning a little into much. Thank God that we still know how to help each other. International Headquarters continues its poise to help with a world and a one army response. God bless each of you. God bless the Salvation Army. I wish I could change our circumstances, alleviate the suffering. I wish I could remove the chaotic realities. I wish I could address the poverty and the hunger. I wish I could quiet the unrest and risk to life. I wish the whole world could receive the Savior. It seems that the challenge with these and other things are part of our broken and our fallen world. There is a relevant question for all of us. While we exist between normals, while we wait, while life seems to be paused, in the between time, in the meantime, I'm asking, what are you doing? I'm asking, what's the army doing? And in particular, I'm asking that we be attentive to what God is doing. I want to remind you that faith in God is a well-placed faith. And if life's events create cataclysmic realities, we are in his hands. He is our savior. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is still sovereign. He assures us of a heavenly provision. Countless times I place my family, Commissioner Rosley, and the whole army in his hands. And then I declare, Lord, I am not afraid. I am in your hands. First Peter 1, 3 to 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through Jesus Christ and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. God, help us to be faithful in these days, to be faithful in the meantime, while we actively wait on him. Let the army be his instrument in the world where we are living. May God bless the Salvation Army, and may God bless you today. general referred to that song we're in his hands and just as we want to reflect on what he has to say we're going to listen to that song and um, we often just listen to the chorus um, but this evening we're going to listen to um, the whole song and you will see the words of the the verses come up and just as you reflect on those words that will come up in front of you um, just um, sit comfortably wherever you are and relax knowing that you're in his hands and may God um, wrap his arms around you. May you physically know his presence with you just now. I'm in his hands. Darkened clouds may gather round me I trust the one who whispers peace Although the winds and waves Would threaten to confound me He walked upon the ancient seas He still can calm the storm in me I cannot see in the night that lies before me But I hold the hand that made the stars My faith is firm in the one who watches over me His steadfast love will be my guard He will forever hold my heart I'm in His hands I'm in His hands Whatever the future holds I'm in His hands The days I cannot see Have all been planned for me His way is best you see I'm in his hands gone by you have always been my portion when I have yielded to your love so here I stand alive in you and available for you to use me take all my life for your glory Jesus Christ I'm in your hands 
I'm in your hands Whatever the future holds I'm in your hands The days I cannot see Have all been planned for me Your way is best I know I cannot see I hope been planned for me Your way is best I know I'm in your head Father, just now we thank you because indeed we know we're in your hands. Whatever the future holds, we're in your hands. And we just claim that again. We thank you for the, the truths of your word. And we just pray that you will give us all that we need in these days. Speak to us especially that um, our, our time will not be wasted, that these days we will reflect upon and know that they were days spent with you in a special way. So, Father, just be with us each, we pray whatever we face these coming days. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A closing song. And if you have a songbook, it's 509 in the songbook. Um, the Founders Song. Um, I, the specific arrangement I've chosen, um, but it only has four verses, to which I apologise to the likes of Carol, who uh, likes the full seven verses. It's verses one... Um, five, six, and seven, um, but various people um, throughout, um, uh, from around the world that have um, recorded this and the words of the founder's song, O Boundless Salvation, Deep Ocean of Love. And we just find our, uh, finish our time of worship together with these words of um, encouragement, these words of inspiration um, for each of us in these days that lay ahead. So, if you want to stand and sing, feel free or stay sitting comfortably. Um, sing to the top of your voices. You're all on mute. It's safe. Don't worry. So let's share together the Founder's Song. The Founder's Song tells the story of God's boundless salvation, but it won't sing itself.
blessing and benediction over you this evening from Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. 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 I have to shout hallelujah after that. <laughs>